Welcome, 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 welcome everyone to the Ladies' Lounge. It is such a wonderful day here in New York City. Oh gosh, I was able to go outside and put away some of my garden things because it's a beautiful day, but in a couple of days, it's going to be cold again. <laughs> but I give God praise that we have strength and we have health and we are alive. We are alive and we are kicking. Glory to God. God is an awesome God. I am so happy that we're here on the Ladies Lounge. We're here to learn, to love, and to laugh. Today, our subject is coming from women in ministry the ups and downs of being in ministry. God is an awesome God. So we bless the Lord we have on our panel today, three beautiful ladies. Beautiful. Now, ladies. Okay. We are okay. now in, um, here I am in New York and I have, praise God, um, Pastor Victoria Boomer Harris. And her church is called the True Worship Deliverance Ministries. She has been pastoring since 2004. And we have on our panel, one of my high school girls. Hala hala, holy child in the house. <laughs> our sister, evangelist, Marcia Baker Clark was what I knew her from school. But she represents the married ladies in ministry. Glory to God. Pastor Harris is a widow. And we have thirdly, oh yes, let me talk about our evangelist Baker's ministry. She has a ministry called Prayer for Marriages. And before you say I do, she has her ministry on Facebook Live, and she also does private counseling, okay? So we bless God for her. She is a woman of God. She's all the way in Florida. I was supposed to come back to Florida in July, but because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to see you guys then. But guess what? We're going to come out again. And praise God, we have our third panelist today, the prophetess Georgette Taylor. And she has been in ministry since 2007. The name of her church is Kingdom Come Embassy. And we just bless God for these women of God that's going to speak about their experience, ups and downs in ministry. Of course, we know in the ladies' lounge, we're not just here to laugh and to learn and to lull. We are here to go higher in God. Glory to God. And when we learn from other people's now, we know wisdom um, is a principal thing, and then we, therefore we must get wisdom. And wisdom also comes from learning from other people. So here, we are here to learn from these wonderful ladies. Glory to God. And we're going to ask, first, we're going to have Pastor Harris to come on, then Evangelist Baker, and then we will close out with the prophetess herself. Bless you, Pastor Harris. You will have to unmute yourselves, ladies. I think she's frozen. Yeah, I see it. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Okay, what was the question? Now I can't hear you. Okay, I muted because it's your time to make your presentation about the ups and down in the okay. ministry. Yes, bless God. Okay. Okay, being a pastor since 2004, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, when I first started um, pastoring, I had no idea really what to do. And um, I had asked my senior pastor who had ordained me, would he come 
and help. And he said that he would, but he never showed up. That was a scar in my heart. So um, coming from a family of pastors, I had to pattern myself after what I had been taught under them. And um, it's just not easy. It's not easy. You, you get people that come into the ministry and say they're going to help you. And they're really not helping. And then you have the ones that are there who who supposed to be helping. They're confused. So it's 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 kind of hard. It's hard. The ups and downs. Um, I've had basically with just with members. Um, giving instructions, doing it their way and not the way you instruct them to do it. And so you don't want to lose them, so you don't want to hurt people's feelings and. You got to know what to say and how to say it. You got to be mindful that um, there are people too, and they're hurt and they're scarred, and we're all growing together. So there's a lot of ups and downs in ministry that pastors have to be mindful of, and even um, um, pastors, especially if they're, they're not married or even if they're married, and and, and they're, they're in ministries. Some pastors, they're the, they're the senior pastor and their husbands are not pastors. So that's kind of hard too. And that brings the ups and downs in ministries because you got to be holistic. You got a family. You win, um, start, when to stop. Um, it's just a lot. It's a pull. It's a weight, especially when you're pulling the weight by yourself. And you really don't have nobody in your corner. So you got to be the usher, the pastor, the preacher, uh, the, take it up the offering. You got to do it all until God exalts you and bring people in that want to be serious and that want to be delivered, that want to be serious, that's going to stand by you, not one day and then leave the next day. So you, you got to do it all. There's a lot of ups and downs. You got to when it's up. Pray that it stays up. And when it's down, that God bring it back up. But the Bible said, don't let our good spoke things are going wrong. Still let it shine. That's what I got to say. Still let it shine. Stand in spite of the differences, the obstacles, the trials, the tribulation, the pain, the scars, the hurt. You can cry, but nobody got to see you cry. Because we got to remember, we got other souls that we're, we're, we're holding. So if we are weak and we cry and we can't build them up. So we just got to stand, especially as women in ministry. Amen. I'm, you know, um, coming up in the ministry also, just like, just to reiterate what you just said, um, you have to understand the needs of the people that they have, they're hurting also. And that's very important um, because um, sometimes people will act out in church and um, it's coming from, you have to understand that some of these acting out, it's not coming from a surface. It's coming from deep within. Uh, sometimes things that happen to people back in their childhood, um, things that they're carrying that they need to be delivered from. And uh, we have to understand also that these are souls. Everyone is a soul and Jesus loves everyone. Um, and of course, it is, it, is, it is important for us to remember those things and always treat the people with love. We have to correct, but correct in love. Glory to God. And it, it's very important. I'm glad that you said that, Pastor Harris. Bless the Lord. So we're going to ask now um, for our evangelist Baker to come and have her presentation concerning her ups and downs in the ministry. Bless the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I greet the, my other palinists, um, Pastor Harris and Prophetess Georgette. Thank you, um, the host, Pastor Michelle, my high school sister. <laughs> and I'm just thanking God to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I'm truly honored to be here with you in the ladies' lounge. 
the ups and downs in ministry as a married person. I'll speak on the downs. The down part of being as a married person in ministry, you have to, I want to say negotiate your time because, you know, you're a wife, you're a mother, and then you're in ministry. And so I don't, the, the only down part side to being, a, being in ministry as a woman and being married is that the time, you have really no time for yourself. But the ups, I love it. I'm busy. I'm number one, as a woman in ministry first, I'm a wife. So you're a wife first in ministry. You know, so I have to make sure home is taken care of when you're in ministry. Home, home must be taken care of. It's no need for me to go out and ministering to women or men or just people in general on the outside and my home is not correct. So home has to be in order before I even venture out. Everything has to be in order, have to, you know, everything has to be in its rightful place because, you know, a lot of times women, and, and I think just women period in ministry, a lot of times our home, in our home we're defeated, but in the public we look so like we're victorious. So, and I'm, 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 I'm where I find balance. I make sure that home and ministry is the same. I don't want to be lacking at home or, or this all the way up in ministry on the, in the public and in the home, my ministry is down. So there is a balance. So as a woman in ministry and being married, there has to be balance. If, if my husband is sick, just because I have an, a preaching assignment, I can't say, well, I need to go do the Lord's work. No, I have to take care of my husband. You know, if my son, something is going on with my son, I need to take care of my son first. I don't need to be running the city. I need to be home ministering to my family. So as a woman, as a woman and a married woman in ministry, time and prioritizing what is most important. Yes, the work of the Lord is important, but family is first and we have to take care of family. I remember um, some years ago, T.D. Jakes, he said he was preaching, saving, loosing all these women, and yet he had a daughter at home pregnant and he didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, from then I started saying, you know what? Ministry at home has to be first. You know, the Bible even says it, charity begins at home. Love begins at home. So home has to be taken care of. Home is home should be where our most effective ministry is in the home before we can go. On. We we try to save the people in the church and in and in the street, but our home, the people in our home, homes that's living with us needs to hear the gospel first so that they can be delivered as well as you taking the gospel abroad. Amen. That's my point for now. Okay, uh, Prophetess Taylor. Prophetess Taylor. <laughs> yes, God bless you. Thank you so much for this opportunity, um, Pastor, to share with the other panelists. God bless you, Pastor Harris, Evangelist Baker. Um, once again, thank you for the opportunity to share um, about divorce in ministry, the ups and downs in divorce in ministry. I am honored to be on here today. Amen. So what I want to talk about, um, the ups and downs as a divorcee in ministry, um, it's been a challenge um, because, you know, when, um, when you want to see marriages succeed, especially give me one moment, especially as a, as a Christian, you want marriage to succeed. Um, so especially when you have members and other counts, people you're counseling come to you and said, why didn't your marriage work? You know, and um, how can you be a pastor and how can you be in ministry and how can you be a Christian and your marriage is, is, um, is failing. And, um, and the things that I want to let everybody know is that there are ups and down in life ups and down in marriages. Um, as I always tell um, everyone that I counsel that when, when we get married, it, it takes commitment, it takes communication, and it takes a constant um, show of love 
amen, to, um, in order to maintain your marriage. And sometimes when we get married to, as, even as Christians, because when I got married, um, when I, I was married before I, um, I became a Christian, when I became a Christian and my husband couldn't stand the change of seeing me, you know, being born again. And um, I didn't try and push Christ on my husband. I tried to be the, Christ, the only Christ he seed, but he didn't want to be married to a Christian woman anymore. You know, so um, so one of the one of the main things with the ups and down is that sometimes um, we have people who are unequally yoked in marriages, right? So when um, so I always encourage everyone, even when you're married, just be the Christ that God called it to be. Be a wife to your husband. Don't try and bring minister to your husband. Bring Christ to him, or bring Christ to her, and be an example of what Christ is to your spouse. Um, one of the, um, it is said that there is divorce, the highest rate of divorce is in the church, which is a shame, you know, because we, we, um, we're taught to love, right, to love as Christ of the church. We're taught to, um, I think 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is um, never failing, love all no records of wrong, um, love forgives, love forgets right in in first corinthians 13 and it's a shame in the church we don't practice what we preach um i be, i believe um that the, one of the reasons why we have so much divorce in the church is because we refuse to for, forgive and we refuse to humble ourselves because the bible also says that we should um submit one to another not only does a woman submit to the man but the man submit to the woman and i believe um my personal belief is that um, we could have less divorce in in the church if we could just walk in that first corinthians 13 love amen and if we can submit one to another um one of the thing i do implore not only just believers but i implore everyone um keep trying, you know, keep trying, deny yourself and put your spouse first. I mean, a lot of people have said, I, I can't do that. That's impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. I believe all marriages, no matter what the partner did to you, I believe all marriages can work. But then again, if two agree, um, in Matthew 19, the Bible says the reason why we have divorce is why? For the hardness of heart, because men heart are hard. So I believe if we humble ourselves and we submit to each other, um, you know, with extra help from the outside, because sometimes we cannot see each other face to face, but when we got intervention, like Evangelist um, Baker um, Marriage Counseling Group, if we have those intervention, you know, then we can see, oh, I, I didn't see it that way, I didn't see it that way. But one of the things, um, the ups and downs, I believe, while we're having so much divorces in the church is lack of communication, lack of commitment, lack, lack of um, com, um, humility and submitting one to another. You know, if we, if we can, if we, can avoid these things, um, I know we'll have strong marriages and relationships today. Amen. I do have a question for each of you, um, but um, speaking from the single pastor standpoint, it is quite challenging to actually be a single pastor. Um, I, of course, it goes for female and male. Um, I. I do completely, completely believe in not letting my good be evil spoken of. So I do not believe in giving people the impression that I am going with this person or I'm interested in that person as a buffer to others to kind of say, well, oh, pastor got a boyfriend. So um, I don't believe in girlfriend, boyfriend business at all. Okay, and uh, I don't, I don't think that I don't think that that is correct. Uh, so I try to keep myself and walk my walk circumspectly before the other women and men in the church. We have quite, in my church, we have quite, we have married women and men, and we have married um, married uh, people that are you know, going through their challenges as well. But uh, we have our single women. So um, I have to minister across the board to everyone. So I, I do believe my, my one of my um, setbacks is um, in the ministries that sometimes I don't have somebody to come home to and to talk about 
um, this or that or the other in the ministry. I don't have someone to come home and share with that. Um, I do have my, my elders who I do share a lot of stuff with um, because um, one of my elders is my sister and she, I could share a lot of things with her. And I do have uh, my, um, another elder there he understands and understands some of the things in the church. And then I have other pastor friends and sisters and brothers, you know, that I can share things with. But, you know, when you come home and you have to um, close the door and um, go to sleep, you know, you don't have anybody to say, you know what, I really, really wish. Sometimes you just wish somebody would just hold you. That's to encourage you. Just not for anything else, just to hold you you know, and that's a, that's a little setback um, in a sense that's a little down for me. But one of the ups for me is the fact that um, I, I love people. I am a loving person. Everybody that knows me, I'm a loving person. I'm a very affectionate person. I guess, um, you know, psychology would let you know because you're the last child and you're in a big home with all these different family members. They're always affectionate to you. So you know how to be affectionate to other people. So um, I do love people and I do love to see when the people are happy and they, you know, they grow in the Lord. So that's the up and the down is the, the time when you don't have someone to really be there for you. So I do have a question for, first of all, I have a question for Pastor Harris. All of you have a question now. Pastor Harris, I would like to know from you, how would you encourage a woman in this time we're having this COVID and you know, there are lots of pastors uh, different that, that's dealing with members. They have lost members, um, even pastors that have lost their husband or wife. Um, I know personally um, pastors that have passed away and the spouse is still alive. Um, how do you um, encourage, because you are the widow in the, um, <laughs> you are the widow in the group. How do you encourage someone that has to continue in ministry that was a pastor or any function in the ministry and they're grieving the loss of a loved one and still have to continue to minister to the people in the church? How do you, um, how do you encourage someone about that? You have to unmute yourself. Well, the, um, the first thing I, I um, would do or would like to say, um, they would have to stay prayed up. It's important to be in prayer. It's important to connect with someone other than yourself that's going through the same battle and the same thing and um, encourage one another and, and, and stay firm. It's a hard, it's a hard thing, especially when you lose somebody and you're so used to them being there. And just like you said, when you want to go home, you want somebody to hold you or hug you or, or say, uh, 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 let's pray together or let's eat or let's take a walk. And they're no longer there. That's a scar and a serious hurt. And you got to be so careful because while you're hurting, you got to remember that you're in ministry. And when people hurt, they have a tendency to hurt other people. So you got to be careful how you walk in ministry as a woman and a widow and losing somebody. Because you got to remember that other part of you was your better half. And, and some people get angry when people die. You know, they have, they have anger. Why did you take them? Or why did you take her? Why ain't they there? If they were here, they could help. They could do this. But I would encourage the widow on today that's going through, that's pastoring, to hold on to God's hand and be strong. And knowing that in your weakness, God comes to make you strong. Amen. He comes to show up and show out in your life and let somebody else know that you can go through and you can stand this storm. Because one day, too, you're going to transition, amen, and then your kids or your other person, whoever it is, is going to go through the same thing, but you can stand and, and go through this. Because the, the Bible lets us know that flesh and blood can't see them, 
it can't go there and we know that we are just borrowed and even though it hurts and it's gonna hurt for a long time this is not easy they die today and you smiling they're gonna die today or die tomorrow and your heart is gonna be sorrowful but you still gotta stay strong you gotta persevere and 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 just take a day by day step. It's it's a process. It's gonna hurt. You're gonna grieve. Connect with somebody that's grieving too, but don't fail the church, and don't give up hope. Connect and stay connected to the true vine, which is our Father and Lord Savior Jesus Christ. God gives you strength. He's a God of understanding, compassion. He never makes a mistake. He gives us all the in-between. He knows our birthday and he knows our death date. So all the middles belong to us. So why you have the middles with your sprout? Do something wonderful and awesome. Continue to serve God in spirit and in truth. And when that season comes and there's life is no more, just stand. I encourage the widow today that's in the church, that's pastoring, the evangelist is that 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 leading people, the bishop, the, the the apostles, whoever it is, that stand strong in the Lord. He got your back, he got your side, he knows your pain, he knows your sorrow, and he's there for you. Stay in prayer, stay prayerful. And God will fight your battles because there's a battle that you're fighting. This sickness of hurt. But God knows how to heal every pain. And after a while, as the days go by and the years go by, you'll be stronger and you'll be able to reach out and touch somebody else and help them. I know what I'm talking about. I've been through it. And even right now, being a widow, my husband is going 22 years. I still get that pain comes back saying, if you were here, you could help me in ministry. If you was here, we could take a walk. If you was here, we could do this. But the fact is he's not here and he's not coming back here. So I got to continue on and stay strong in the Lord. Amen. One thing that um, I learned um, as a pastor is that um, nobody can tell you how long you should grieve. That's right. The loss of a loved one. Um, sometimes um, my mother's been gone since 2002 and um, I still dream that my mother passed away. Sometimes I'm in my sleep as if she just passed away, just bawling and bawling and bawling. And um, nobody can tell you how long you have to grieve, but it's okay as a pastor, it's okay yes. for you to have, that's how you have to have your ministry set up in such a way that you can take a step back have your elders, have your ministers do some of the work. Whether they have to preach and you sit down and somebody pour into you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, okay? Um, there's a time to grieve. The Bible does say it's a time to mourn. So you have to take, if you have to take the time and step back and exactly. just exactly. heal exactly. because you do need healing. Anybody that lost anybody, whether it be a child, a sister, a friend, a, a husband, anybody, everyone needs time to heal. Exactly. And, and when you're in ministry, it's fine. It's okay to take a step back. Whether you, if you have a bishop or overseer, you speak to the overseer and say, listen, I need, I need a break. I need a break. Or you speak to your elders and your ministers. You've been teaching them all along. You've been having them do the work. You've been pouring into them. Let them pour into you now. Okay? Pastor, Pastor Orgy, it's one thing. They got to keep their mind set back. Because when you're going through a grieving, sometimes you can actually lose your mind. Your mind will tell you one thing or you'll be seeing another thing. And after a while, people will be thinking you're crazy. Or, or you know, or you'll find yourself talking to yourself. and But you got to tell God to keep your mind. Let this mind be in Christ. Your mind got to be steadfast. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you still can grieve. Like you said, get somebody to pray with you. Get somebody to do the service. Get somebody to do this because you can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Because you're weak at times. Yes. We get weak too. Mm -hmm. We're human. 
So you need somebody there for you. If you if you're pastoring and you got people that's gonna stand with you, they might not understand the grief, but they'll understand that you're weak at this point. So let's do something. Pastor needs some help. She needs some prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Amen. let's hold a hand. Let's let's walk her to the door. Let's something to relieve the burden off of her, mm -hmm. to relieve the heaviness. Maybe she want to go to dinner. Maybe she just want to go for a walk. Maybe she just want to go to the store. Whatever it is that soothes some of that pain, relieve that. Because it's, it's a pain sometimes, I'm telling you, that will never, ever go away. Because, I mean, I, I, I got an ankle bracelet I wear with my husband's name on it. And I feel so connected to him. If I take it off, I feel lost. Wow. And sometimes I find myself still crying. And I ask him, why did you have to leave me? But only God knows why. So here I am 22 years later, still standing strong. And I believe one day that if I do what God called me to do, that I'll see him again. Amen. You know, so. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I do believe that um, Evangelist Baker, I have your question, but I do believe that you have something to say to her. Evangelist Baker. Not, not now, but I want to speak to her with her privately. Possibly. Okay. 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 Privately, no problem. Definitely. Okay. All right. No problem. This is the ladies lounge. Yeah, definitely <laughs> private. Definitely private. But I Okay. Would. Okay. All right. So we have a question for you, Evangelist Baker. I'm going to put you to work because I got two questions for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Say the Lord called the female to pastor, not the husband. And the husband, that's the first question. He says, no. And then that's, that's the first one. Second question. So now she's the Lord call her to pastor and she's speaking to her husband about it. And the husband said, no, you're not going to pass. I don't call no woman pastor. But can First I answer? Let, let's do one question at a time. <laughs> okay. 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 And so, um, so is, so I have a question before I answer it. So with me being called into ministry, is my husband saved? Is my husband also in ministry? He's also, he's saved, but not in ministry. Okay, so okay, so if if I'm called to ministry, right? And even my husband is in ministry, but the call is not on him, well, to me that would be kind of out of sync because him being my head, the Lord will definitely have to speak with him as well. And um, not that I couldn't go and pastor, but he being the head of me, I don't think that God is going to call me. If he's, that's why I ask, is he saved, right? Because if he's spiritual and saved and the Lord, the Lord is not going to overlook him for me to become the pastor because God is a God of order. He's a God of order. And as my husband being my head, I don't think my, I don't think the, my, the Lord will call me now seeing that my husband is also saved to, to pastor over him. I think now, however, he can call me because my husband now does not want to do it and to fulfill the call. So then it gets, it gets tricky like that. So I, so I, I want to be clear. I'm not saying that the Lord cannot call me the, the pastor and not my husband, but God works in order. He works in order. The, 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 the head of woman is man. The head of man is God. So God is going to see his head first before he comes to me. Unless now if the man, if my, now if my husband isn't saved, then that's a total different thing, right? If my husband isn't saved, then okay. But I would definitely have to speak with him and come in agreement because I won't want to be pastoring the church and then my husband not there at all or not in agreement. It would be sticky. Would I still want to pastor? Yes. But I wouldn't run to pastorship unless my husband now come in, in fellowship and alignment with what I have to do for the Lord. And, 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 with, and with wisdom... And knowledge and understanding as being that sanctified wife now to, 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 to cause my husband now to become sanctified so he would join me 
in ministry. Okay. I wonder if that answers. And, the- and can I add in, I just want to say something too. And that is why it's important that we are equally yoked um, as couples, um, because that will have a lot to be with somebody who is equally yoked with you, um, who understand what it is for the call of, to fulfill the call of God on your life. True, right true, because yes. sometimes you can marry somebody and um and even though they are christian they are, don't even have the they're not even growth to maturity to understand that god have a we all have a calling on our life and we right. need to fulfill our destiny and our purpose so right. if this husband you married is not where you are and you and you have a call in your life then as, as you gotta submit to your husband as evangelist said so you have to obey the lord and then wait until that husband can let me let, me, let, let me piggyback in that too on that too because what we can also do too is push our husband and a lot of times in ministry i know Come women on. don't like to push the man you know because we want to we want to so much be in charge Love and that boss mm-hmm. and be in control when you push that man, oh Jesus. Come I'm, on, come on now, yes. When you push that man to his fullest potential and embrace yes. him and build him and pull and push and drag that pastor out of him, he can't do nothing but line up with the word. However, because we want to be so in charge and large and the boss and the pastor, so we said, well, God called me the pastor and I'm going to pass it no matter what you say. But if we push that man of God, yes. pull the priest out of him, align him, help him to become aligned with the call of God on his mm-hmm. life, Yes. Then we won't have to worry about anything. We won't have to worry about him saying, no, you can't get the call. You know, he will get the call first. And, and because God, like I say, God is a God of order. So he's not going to go above the man unless he's just deaf and can't hear God. Then he will put it in, in my spirit. And for me, I can, you know, I can say, you know, babe, I had a dream or an inclination that the Lord wants you in ministry. And so, you know, it, it's a way we can, um, Prophetess Georgia, how we can push our spouses. Yes. Mm-hmm. that you know push them listen the proverbs 31 woman she pushed that man listen everybody in the city thought he was the one that was doing stuff when it was her it's okay for us to lead in quiet and push our while we push our husband it's nothing wrong with us pushing our husbands and making them feel like they are the king that they um. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't lessen us or, or it doesn't minimize now our um responsibility or our yeah. or our place in the kingdom when we mm-hmm. but when we don't and we step ahead of them that's the problem coming in i think that's a lot of the issue and that's the issue now in the kingdom with husband and wife in ministry you over there and he's over there no together together because you're one Amen. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So okay. when, when you as you now as a woman push and pull your husband into his purpose. Mm-hmm. All right. Can I can, can I say can I say this? Yes. If you okay. if you have a husband, all right, if you get married and your husband, you get saved, and God, you have a calling on your life. And um like you had said, you had gotten saved, so your husband didn't want to be with you because you had changed your lifestyle. Um, you became a Christian, so he didn't want to be a part of that. But then you have a husband who um, accepts your lifestyle, but he's still not ready to come to church, but God has a calling on your life. And God said he has compelled us to go out into the highways and hedges and preach the gospel. So now that you're saved and you're still married and your husband's not saved yet, you're not going to preach the gospel or go ahead because y'all not um, no, no, the gospel. No, you no. can't do that. No, 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 no. I'm, think, I'm not thinking you hear me. I'm, what I'm saying is not that I'm not going to preach and do, but my, the, my home, my home is my first ministry. The, the, the first thing that I need to do now as, as a pastor that is married to an unsaved man is to get him, bring him into the kingdom. My, as a mm-hmm. matter of fact, he's going to be my first soul. Right. Because he's, when going I, when to, I heard... he's, he's going to be my first soul. And a lot of times what I find that is like, like lady, um, I think um, 
I think Lady Georgette has shared it, mm -hmm. that, you know, we're not going to push Christ on them. But when we live a life, yes. you got to live the life. Live by, life, mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you right. something. Let me tell you something. As wives or as a wife, our first role, if we're, if we're in a, let, let, let's, I'm not saying put aside Christianity, but as mm -hmm. a woman in the home, if mm -hmm. we allow our men to be mm -hmm. the man in the home, uh, when, once we become Christian or once we, once we would decide to, to, to join a religious faith, our spouse will not have a problem. Number one, why? Because we have communicated it. And what I find is a lot of persons, if both persons um, are not saved, and one, the wife now, normally the women normally come to Christ first, right? Right. That's normally. The women normally come to Christ first. Mm -hmm. Normally when the women come to Christ first, get baptized, you know, you went to a meeting one night and your heart wasn't right and something got a hold of you and you got mm -hmm. took on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. However, you went home. Immediately you're trying to change them and say, you need to come to church now because I'm safe. No, 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 no. You now need to start living a life of Christ that changed, Amen. transformed life in front of your spouse now. So he can say, wow, there's a change in my wife. Before you used to be miserable and nagging, but now he sees you praying and, and worshiping. Do you not think that that man is not going to come and follow you and join you in Christ? But when we don't do that now, when we come home now and tell our spouse, oh, you're going to hell and you need to get saved, they're not going to want that Jesus. They're not going to want it. They're going to want to go to the club, to the dance hall. They're going to want to go the opposite way. However, now when you come home and you be that submissive wife, like you've been taught now in the word, that man he won't, he won't, he won't, he won't be able to stay in the state that he's in. Why? Because he can see the transformation in the wife. Right? So I find that. The, for the most part, not 100%, but for the most part, why some of these, the, the spouses, the male spouse remain unsaved is because the, the wife is not living the life of Christ. That, 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 that's what I find out. It, 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 it could vary from, you know, home to home. You know, some person, some male now could have had a bad experience in church, so they don't want to hear nothing about church. So it, it, there, there are multiplicities of reasons why now it's not 100%. But for 80% of the time, if that wife comes home and says, babe, oh my God. Well, you know, my husband- so Michelle invited me to church. And, and my heart, the, the, the message was preached and I just felt convicted in my heart and the Lord pulled on my heart and I went up and I gave my life to the Lord. Babe, please come and, come and share this experience with me. But when we come and we pour it, when we open up their mouth and force feed them with it, they're not going to go anywhere. They're not. I think we could go on and on and on with this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the next question? Okay, no, you answered the next question about pushing the man into ministry. So yeah. you're good. And it, it is true. It is true because remember, as she said, Proverbs 31, woman, I believe our role as women, um, you know, we should push our husbands not only in ministry, in every area of life. You know what I mean? And that's that's why we're called the help meet, mm -hmm. right? Help okay. meet. That means I'm going to, I'm the help to meet all his needs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Yeah, and one of the things to, I that, wanted that, to that is true. That Amen. is true. And, yeah. and for the most part, what happened is because we're not helping and we're overstepping oh. the problem in the home. And because you're overstepping your boundaries now, listen, no man, no male is going to allow a woman now to walk over him. It just don't go like that. It just, it doesn't happen. If you find them, if you have a man that allows you to walk over him, trust and believe he has somebody else on the outside that's making him feel like a king. So we, we have to be very, very careful Ladies, I admonish you to be very careful. Never try to overstep 
you know, like override or overrule your husband or try to be controlling because just like you don't want to be controlled, they don't want to be controlled either. So we have to be very mindful with that. Okay. This right is now. a long discussion, I see. Okay. <laughs> I got one, I got one question for before we go any further. I got one question for um Prophetess Taylor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prophetess Taylor. So I know we could be on this discussion for a long, long, long time. I'm yeah. not married, so I can't answer any of well, I can't answer some questions from the Holy Ghost, but I will go in there. Next question for our prophetess Taylor, because I'm is against us. What do you say to people that say that a person that's a Christian or saved and divorced? cannot be married again oh god oh wow that's that's is that's a, for prophet is that's, yeah <laughs> that is that is a big big one so um yeah because i've had this question to myself like people said in the bible said you can once you get married then you're supposed to be stayed married forever and if you're divorced you must stay single well that's not my belief. I believe that um, in ministry, saved or not saved, if you get married and you were divorced, and the Bible says that he permits remarriage if the husband or wife committed adultery. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I would say that for, for adultery's sake, then you can get remarried. As I told you earlier before, I don't believe um, if you try to reconcile, reconcile your marriage with your spouse and you try to reconcile, you know what I mean? And it's the person still want to go their, their ways, then I believe you should remarry. I believe if you did everything that you can in your power to save your marriage and then you can't reconcile, then I believe that you should remarry if you can re get remarried, right? But, and one of the, one of my main thing is that you, if it was you were the one that would, that caused the separation or the divorce, then you must try and be the one to reconcile, restore. Even if it's not you, I believe that you should try everything. If you can, if the person don't listen to you, then get some money, get counseling, get people who can intervene in your marriage to assist you so that your marriage can work. Because I believe, as I said before, all marriage can work out. I believe, but if, but as, as the Bible said, because of the hardness of heart that people divorce. So if that person's heart is still hard towards you and refuse to reconcile, then move on. Move on by the grace of God. Um, he will find you another husband or another wife according to his will. Like for me personally, I'm, I'm still waiting, um, you know, waiting for that husband to find me again, you know? if that's God's will for me, you know what I mean? But I, I, I wish he doesn't want me to burn. He want me to get married, amen? Amen. So Man, can, I, can I ask you a question? Sure. What, is, what I mean, I have a friend um, mm -hmm. who's been married four times. Now his first wife passed away. Mm -hmm. So that allowed him to be married again because he was a widow. Uh huh. He, he got married again and, um. Him and the second wife got a divorce. Okay. Okay. Um, he moved out of the state and he got married again. And the third wife, she died. So my perception of it was since he got a divorce from the second wife, according to the word of God, like you said, if you committed adultery or finding um, infidelity, that's ground for divorce. But mm -hmm. he never, I know he wasn't going to tell me his business. So I don't know if he caught her in, infidelity, but I said to him, how could you marry the third wife when you're still married to the second wife, even though you divorced? What was the ground of the divorce? But he never said anything. So the third wife died and he just recently got married again. So I said to him, now you got two living wives. And, um, um, now he's not even with the third, the fourth wife. They just recently got married and they're separated. So I said to him, I know you're not looking for another woman. So I'm, I, I mean, the I'm just, I'm just saying like the Bible. What? There's I'm some know, things I, in him that he, know, he, he needs to work on. Got four, the fourth wife 
is still alive. The fourth wife is still alive. The third wife died. The first wife died. So he got two living wives. So I told him he was the man at the well. That's, so, that's, why, I I, that's why I believe in counseling before marriage. Because I believe there's something going on with him. Why you have so many divorces. And but sometimes it could be something going on with us. Right? Why we want to end a marriage. Um, because I don't believe in just because um, I disagree, you disagree, want to get divorced. Or because you hurt me and I hurt you, you're going to get a divorce. No, that's not marriage. Marriage takes a whole lot. It takes commitment. Exactly. It takes compromise. It takes, um, you know, communication. There's so many things with, with marriage. And it does not say the first, the first um, um, experience, negative experience we have, we're going to get a divorce. No. No, I mean, the, um, you and your, your sisters and your brothers have the back all the time. Do you end the relationship between your, your, your siblings? No, or your parents? No, you know, but that's marriage. So, but, I, but for him personally, there seem to be either he have soul ties or he have all kind of issues going on with him. So he need to check himself. Like I, I encourage everyone who is seeking marriage, get counseling, you know, check yourself. You know, to see if you're right. Because even many women are want to get married today. And if you speak to them, they're not ready for marriage. If you speak to them, that it's like they want to have you, me, myself, and I. What marriage? I mean, most of them don't know how to sub, don't know the first thing in submit in submitting to a person or about commitment. You know, so what marriage? So I believe, and that's why. I, Evangelist Baker, we need more people talking about um, before you get married, before I say I do. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they can come uh, on. They, he, maybe you need to invite them on to before you say I do on Thursday night. I'm going to share the flyer on my page because. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Like, like, prophetess, because... like Prophetess Georgia said, it's a lot when, when, when you're the common denominator in four relationships, then it, it tells of your character. Yes. Yes. It speaks to your character. So like Prophet has said, something could be going on with him that he's internalizing and not expressing. And he definitely needs to be counseled. That, yes. That's definite. That's yes, please share, please, please share the link for your um, page on this particular, um, <laughs> on this particular video so that people can come in and see what it is. But um, yes. I was told that when we go into a marriage, you go into a marriage to give, not to receive. We mm. go into marriage to give. Now, I'm not going to go into all that because that's another long sermon. And we're all <laughs> preachers here. So. <laughs> but I'm so glad. I'm so happy that you ladies were here to share on these subjects of women in ministry, the ups and downs. Oh, the ups and downs. Part of it is marriage. <laughs> so it seems. So um, I'm so grateful to God that all of you were able to share on today. I'm so grateful to God for all of you. Beautiful, beautiful princesses of the most high God. I bless God for you. And I'm thankful that we were able to share. And you know what? Every topic on these panels for the ladies lounge will be revisited. So we bless God for all of you that tuned in, that joined in us with us here today for the Ladies' Lounge. We did learn something today. We did Amen. love and surely if nobody else laughed, I laughed. And I know you all laughed too. So I bless God for you. Please tune in again on next Tuesday at 3 p.m. We will have the Ladies' Lounge here. And join us here on the Sanctuary of Praise and Worship Center live. Hallelujah. Again, we love you. On Sunday for 1 p.m. And we'll be back next Tuesday at 3 p.m. We love you, you Pastor Thank you. I, I just want to love you. I love you. Yeah. Okay, say, take it to social you. distance hug. Ah. Nice meeting all of you. It was a yes. blessing and a you. pleasure nice to share, to share. Yes. I, so I you guys God can like link. You. you guys can link up, okay? Bless yes. you. Have a wonderful evening, ladies, and all you of you joining you in. God the bless you, too. Now, God bless you back, like, all share. You. like, share, and comment, please. Let someone know what's going on. Bless you. I, I, I just God bless you.
I just shared the link to the Zoom for Thursday night in the comments. So you yes, can- Yes, please. And please, Evangelist, um, Prophetess Taylor, please. And Pastor Harris, please share onto any link and information you want to share on this video. Okay? Okay. All okay. right. God bless you. I love you. Bless love you. Love you. Love you guys. And thank you again for the love opportunity. You. Thank God you so much. Thank you, Pastor Michelle. Okay. God bless Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.